All right, my dear students, this is Ahmed Raza Darolia, and we are studying some accounting basics, and we just finished making a trial balance. Now, after trial balance, as you can see in the exercise that we discussed in some previous lessons, we need to prepare an income statement. Now, what is an income statement? Income statement, basically, also known as profit and loss account. Income statement basically tells us that how much profit has the business earned or how much loss has the business incurred in a particular accounting period. It can be one year or it can be less than a year. Maybe a bi-yearly or quarterly we can make these accounts or maybe monthly as well. So what we need to do, we need to prepare a trial balance. Uh, sorry, uh, an income statement. Now, if you want to make an income statement, we must have already been prepared a trial balance or the trial balance uh, may be instead given by the examiner. Now, as you can see, we have already made the trial balance for our exercise. Now, uh, with the help of this trial balance, now we are going to make an income statement. Now, let us discuss the few underlying concepts and the format that we use in a trial balance. Now, one thing you must uh, understand that a trial balance has two sides, one debit and one is credit. Uh, although it may seem that the income statement is also has two sides, one debit and one credit, but it, that's not the case. An income statement, my dear students, the two sides for income statements are not debit or credit. Instead, these are just for illustration or presentation purposes. Okay, these two columns are not called debit or credit. Now, why have we actually made two columns? I'll tell you in a bit. We just need two columns for the presentation of an income statement. So, first of all, in an income statement, we have sales. Sales is also known as revenue. Okay, sales or revenue, uh, it is basically the amount that we have received when we have sold our goods okay whenever we are selling these goods to our customers okay the amount on which we have sold these goods the selling price of all of the goods collectively uh, combined uh, is known as sales or revenue now we need to deduct return inward from this what is return inward if some of the customers have returned those goods to us this is known as return inward also known as sales return okay then we have cost of sales what is cost of sale cost of sales is basically the amount that these goods actually cost the business okay one is selling price and one is cost price so let's suppose we are selling something for hundred dollars and that costed the business eighty dollars okay so eighty dollars is basically cost of sales okay the cost price of the goods that we have sold in a particular period so how to calculate cost of sales first of all we have opening inventory opening inventory is the amount of inventory that we had at the start of the accounting period okay at the start of this new year how much inventory we already had in our shelves was opening inventory now we need to add purchase in this opening inventory we need to add the purchase then uh, purchase uh, is basically the goods that we have bought in the particular year okay uh, then as you can see the way we uh, deducted return inward from sales we also need to deduct return outward from purchase return inward are the goods that are returned by our customers because these are not uh, fit or not suitable for them or maybe if we have sent goods with wrong size or specification and return inward is the case when we are returning goods to a supplier due to the uh, reasons that I just mentioned. This is known as return outward, also known as purchase return. Okay, we can also write purchase return. Then we have another thing, carriage inwards. Now, my dear student, there are two types of carriage. Carriage is basically transportation cost. One is carriage inward and another one is carriage outward. Carriage inward means whenever we are buying goods from our suppliers, so the transportation cost that we are incurring uh, in bringing the goods into the business is known as carriage inwards. Okay, so the carriage inward is basically a cost for the business. Therefore, it is added and it increases our cost. Therefore, it is being added in purchases. 
and there is another carriage known as carriage outward carriage outward is basically the transportation cost that we have incurred to deliver these goods to the customers uh, homes maybe okay so this is carriage outward so carriage inward always comes in an income statement uh, in a cost of sales section and carriage outward uh, comes in an expense section okay we need to charge it as an expense then we have a closing inventory uh, uh, let us understand this uh, format why are we uh, adding some items and deducting some items at the same time opening inventory means this inventory was there when we started off uh, this year okay this inventory was already present in our store then we purchase some new inventory therefore purchases will increases our inventory and if we return some of the inventory that was faulty we need to deduct that and that carriage or transportation cost increases our cost therefore we are adding up and the closing inventory is the inventory that is left at the end of the year now my dear students uh, there may be the case that at the end of the year that is 31st December uh, we ha have still have a few items left in our inventory or most of the items are still there because we keep replenishing our inventory and uh, as soon as the stock goes down we order new stock okay so it cannot be that at year end our store is entirely empty that's not usually the case unless and until we are closing down the store so in that case the store will be empty okay so the inventory that is left at the year end should not be charged this year why because we are going to sell this inventory uh, in the next year therefore we are going to charge this inventory in the next accounting period therefore we are deducting this closing inventory now if we if we add up and subtract all of these things we come up with the item that is cost of sales okay now if we deduct sales and cost of sale we are left with with gross profit just give me a minute okay so if we uh, deduct cost of sales from the sales figure we are left with gross profit now why is this called gross profit this is not the final profit for the business uh, instead we need to deduct some of the items that is expenses from this gross profit so therefore we uh, name it as a gross profit now after gross profit there are two more adjustments one is other income uh, what is other income other income are basically incomes that are not relating to the trading activities now any income that is other than uh, buying and selling of goods is it is known as other income now in the question there can be anything that is uh, named as a received rent received or maybe commission received or maybe discount received okay or maybe fees received so any uh, income that is received would come uh, usually come in a other income section okay now after other income there would be will be charging all of the expenses expenses are necessary to run the business to operate the business and finally we are left with the final figure is known as profit for the year okay profit for the year uh, uh, in the previous uh, terminology it was being known as net profit but the current terminology that is used by the examiner of CAIE uh, the examiner uses profit for the year okay first of all my dear we need the sales figure sales also known as revenue now as you can see all of these items are given here sales is 1,250 okay this is sales and we need to enter the sales in a uh, we have why have we entered the sales in the first column because uh, firstly we need to deduct this return inward from the sales in order to calculate the final sales value that is net sales now as you can see there is a return inward also known as sales return we need to deduct this uh, sales return from the sale figure in order to calculate the final value of sale which is also sometimes known as net sales but the examiner usually not label this figure therefore i am not also doing it i am just writing uh, in, it in the next column okay this is net sales now we have cost of sale first of all we have opening inventory now just remember in a trial balance whenever we have any inventory trial balance uh, always contain an opening inventory now as you can see we do not have any opening inventory here and what is the reason behind that the reason behind that is that in this question as you can see uh, we, we are Mr. Riyadi we have just started the business this year okay if we have just started the business this year therefore we do not have any opening inventory because this is a new business okay 
so therefore we do not have any opening inventory so we do not need to write opening inventory out here okay then we have purchases now as you can see purchases or ordinary goods purchases it's already given 42,500 then what about the return outward we can find the return outward in a trial balance trial balance must be given by the examiner or we need to uh, prepare a trial balance ourselves okay uh, now as you can see there is a return outward that is 5000 return outward is also known as purchase return this means we have returned those faulty goods to our supplier okay then we have a carriage cost transportation cost now we have already studied there can be two types of carriage one is carriage inward and another one may be carriage outward now the carriage inward always comes in a cost of sales section and a carriage outward always comes in a expense section now we can find the carriage inward here uh, it is basically a transportation cost then we have closing inventory now you must remember my dear students that carriage inward sorry opening inventory always comes in a trial balance and a closing inventory is never given in a trial balance instead it is always given in the notes or additional information now as you can see in the note inventory unsold at the end of the year was 25000 now uh, at the year end we are left with this inventory so therefore we are not going to charge inventory in this year here instead we are going to charge this inventory in the next accounting period okay now if we add uh, opening and purchase and carriage inward and if we deduct return outward and closing inventory we are left with the value of cost of sale now as you can see in this question i have written cost of sale twice why once uh, i i have written the cost of sale as a heading and secondly i have written cost of sale as a label and in front of this item so this must be followed now if we deduct a cost of sale from this net sales value we are left with the profit that is gross profit okay so the goods that have actually cost the business fifteen thousand five hundred dollars we have sold the, those goods on ninety seven thousand two hundred fifty now as you can see mr ard is enjoying great gross profits okay so the gross profit value is very high normally it's not in the case uh, in the businesses because there is uh, very much competition out there then we have other incomes now other income contains anything that has received in the end rent receive or sometimes examiner referred to as rent receivable or commission receive or commission receivable and maybe discount received now as you can see there are two received here one is rent received and one is uh, discount received so all of the items that are received we need to write it here so okay so uh, there are two other incomes in this case so as you can see anything that uh, has to be added or subtracted i am writing it in the first column and the subtotals or maybe final values are coming in the second column now there are two other incomes we need to add both of these in order to get this other income now what happens uh, if we add this other income to gross profit if we add up both of these items this uh, value doesn't has any name this is a no name figure okay so why are we writing it if it's a no name figure sometimes examiner write this item uh, as a different item and sometimes examiner also gives one mark for this therefore we need to calculate this no name value okay now what we need to do we need, need to deduct all of the expenses now as you can see in a trial balance what are the expenses we need to write expenses one by one first of all we have carriage outward okay carriage outward is the transportation that is incurred in delivering the goods to the customer and carriage inward are is the transportation that is being incurred in uh, buying goods or bringing goods into the business okay then we have some other items such as insurance uh, now what is the insurance insurance uh, as you may be aware uh, is for uh, risky uh, to avoid or minimize a risk maybe for our property or maybe for our vehicles and so on and so forth then we have rent uh, if you have pay, paying rent it is an expense and if instead uh, rent is being received uh, as you can see here it is an other income okay then we have discount allowed there are two types of discount one is allowed and one is received okay when we are when we are paying our suppliers earlier than promised then therefore it is a discount received it is an income for the business and if uh, our customers are paying us earlier than they promised so therefore we are allowing them discount so discount allowed is obviously an expense for the business and discount received it's an income for the business 
now uh, i am writing all of the expenses in the first column and we need to add up all of these expenses in the second column now what happens uh, we need to deduct the expenses from this no name figure uh, in order to calculate the final profit that is profit for the year uh, also previously known as net profit okay so this is basically an income statement income statement uh, which was also previously known as profit and loss account basically calculates that how much profit we have earned during the year and what was the main benefit of conducting the business this year okay so this is basically an income statement 